So it's Thursday, November 12th, and I'm going to do a brief video of Obi and Asher again. The sun's kind of not cooperating. Hi, Obes, because it's coming this way. Good boy. Hey, bud. Wait, wait. All right, wait. Here, Obes. Here, Ash. Good boy. Wait, Ash. And this is for Sam. Good Obi. Watch. Wait. Gentle. Gentle. Good boy. And here's for Ashy. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. And what I'm going to do is just because Sam had asked. Good boy, Obes. Let's go. Oops, watch out, Ash. Sam had asked for me to do some just basic differences between Dobermans and Staffordshire Bull Terriers, which is kind of fun. And I won't rely heavily like on the written standards. Our standard for Staffordshire Bull Terriers is super short. It's like so much open for interpretation, whereas the Doberman standard is like 12 pages long and really doesn't leave a lot of room for interpretation, which actually... And this is a side note, which I have a problem with, but I'm always giving side notes, but is uh, one of the interesting reasons I think you see a lot more Dobermans that look very much alike in the ring as opposed to such variety in the Stafford ring. But anyway, to the differences, both dogs basically call in one form or another in their standard for bold and fearless dogs. And so um, what you see is bold and fearless dogs in both breeds but the difference I think roots more to their breed I'm going up a huge hill by the way I'm not out of shape um but anyway it's roots to their breed um their group the appropriate AKC group that they're in these guys terriers they basically have a very strong mind of their own and so we had never owned anything but Dobermans really or crossbreed dogs before we moved into terriers. And I think one of the first fundamental differences we noted was that Dobermans are working dogs. So they very much aim to please. They're going to do whatever you want and need them to do. And they're Obi's always on guard. That's part of his job as his breed. And it's just, again, he doesn't think twice when you ask him to do something. They're the easiest dog to train in the world in my opinion, and I'm probably not alone in that. Now, Staffords, <laughs> being terriers, what we first discovered with Shaq is that when you ask them to do something, the first thing they do, it shortens in time as you get better at training, but the first thing they do is ask, is this something I'd want to do or is there a better alternative? And you can literally see if you were able to kind of think about, if you put words to dog's thoughts, that they're thinking that. They look around for the better alternative and the risk of not minding you. So that's one of the hugest differences I see. And then the other difference, which is why Asher right here is on a leash, it's nothing to do with, uh, um, you know, him being not safe around people. Uh, the reason he's on a leash is twofold. Number one in primary is simply because there's no other dogs up here. I would probably lose him. I've bought a GPS just for Shaq, but she's such a terrier and such a hunter that she will, uh, all these terriers, they would just go off on a tangent like happened to Shaq. If they see a rat, literal rabbit hole, they'll just go hunting. And that's the terrier side of them. And they'll come back whenever they're good and ready and maybe lost by that point. Whereas again, a Doberman, they're gonna wanna stick. I'm so sorry, it sounds so out of breath, but I think it's also partly the wood burning stove and that is a huge hill, huger than it looks, trust me. Um, over this way, Ash, over this way. Oh. So anyway, that's really interesting because Dobermans also in their standard is loyal and very true. They're very territorial. They want to guard their people and their property. They're generally way more aloof with people. And I think I've spoken about that before, and it's true. They, um, Obi wants, everyone wants to pet Obi. He's striking and he's gorgeous. He's not at all malicious, but he doesn't really care much for people petting him. I mean, he doesn't dislike it, I shouldn't say, but he doesn't, he doesn't one way or another. In the house, sometimes he'll vie for attention because these guys are the exact opposite in that mode too, which is why I think they're so complimentary. These guys want the second person is on the scene. They want the full attention and uh, love from people. And uh, the other difference, which is very relevant right now due to something that happened purely 
from human ignorance. And that is my husband putting a plate of leftover food down after I told him three days prior, why would you ever do that? Please never do that again. Uh, he just apparently didn't put the faith in it and put a food plate down in front of three Staffords. And so we've only had two fights and once was this time and once was when Willow's puppies and, uh, that was over the pet nanny coming and the excited energy, and I think Willow was nervous about the puppies. Both times the Staffords jumped in and got Shaq, and they love Shaq, or did. This time it's brutal. Shaq is fine. She's going to make it with no permanent damage other than she'll never look the same, and I'm beyond horrified and really upset with the situation with my husband. The only thing we can do is somehow try to make it better. And I think, you know, it's a horrific price to pay, but he understands now that there was a reason I said that. And I think it's very tempting, because look at them, they're adorable little dogs. It's tempting to not know what I've spoken about before, quoting my friend Lynn, who has said, you have to view it like having a loaded gun in your pocket at all times, because with other dogs, they're not necessarily good. It's something I don't breed at all for. I try to breed away from it because hundreds of years dog fights have been illegal and dogs can very much have uh, courageous and bold and fearless without ever provoking a fight or being hot tempered. So I don't think that's necessary in any way, shape or form to the breed. And in fact, I think it's highly undesirable in my opinion, but Willow, she didn't start it at all. All three of them jumped in, but I couldn't get them off Shaq, and Al was even worse at that than I at the age of 10 and a half. Anyway, now I'm rambling, Sam, and I was only trying to answer your breed differences. So that's about it, I would say. I mean, there's a lot more, but I don't want to... I do ramble, so just keeping it brief. Plus, this isn't really interesting video footage as much. Oh, I know. I do want to say one more thing after Obi goes to the bathroom. I'll show a picture of him. So here he is. Good boy oh. And the other morning, and this has happened before, kind of I alluded to what I was already talking about, about their prey drive. Obi will hunt things. He loves to run after, but I have literally stopped him from getting a baby bunny before. And just the other day down here, a lot of times early morning, herds of deer come out. And uh, I have Obi, as you see, on a bell collar, so I know where he is. And I also now even have him on an e-collar because we've given permission to walk at this beautiful 70 acre spot. But I don't want, like over there, we're fine walking. That's the guy who owns half of this place. And he said, we're more than welcome to be here anytime. But I don't want him running into nearby ranch land or whatever. So over oh, here, Ashley, I may as well get you while I'm doing the video. So wait, good boy. So I just, um, I put an e-collar on him, but here's the thing. I don't even really know if I need it. I'm just really worried about him. Never people shoot the first thing around this ridiculous area at times. Um, but so I don't want him running away. So I'm trying the e-collar just for the heck of it. Even though he's never done it, he's awesome. And that's what my point was with this is that he runs literally after a herd of deer. Don't you? Oh, wait, Ash. Good stay. Stay. Everybody stay. He runs after a herd of deer and he will still stop in full pursuit and come back, even without an e-collar. But it scares me so much I'm trying the e-collar. Anyway, Sam, there you go. Thank you for asking that. I hope it's not crazy boring because it is definitely more talking than looking at the beautiful dogs because of the sunlight and whatnot. All right, bye.